hello students so in this video we will be discussing uh, isomerism in coordination compounds in the previous video we have discussed ionic uh, means ipc nomenclature and uh, different types of ligands that are present in coordination complexes in this one we will be discussing about the isomerism in coordination complexes okay now see isomerism it is uh, generally of two types first one is your structural isomerism and the second one is stereo isomerism okay so in structural isomerism we have four different types of isomerism present first one is ionization isomerism now see in this isomerism what happens uh, there is a exchange of ligand between this coordination sphere and the ionization sphere now see uh, we have already discussed in our previous video that a coordination compound is uh, composed of two parts one is the cationic part one is the anionic part okay and uh, one is your complex part and one is your free ion part okay now see in this uh, coordination compound we have this part that is in the square bracket now is your complex part and it is called the coordination sphere and the other ion sulfate ion that is present outside this sphere is called your ionization sphere okay now in ionization isomers uh, or isomerism what happens there will be an exchange of ligands between this coordination sphere and the ionization sphere so you can see in this uh, this two are isomers ionization isomers you see in this one we have br means bromide ligands in this coordination sphere and sulfate ions are present outside the coordination sphere okay and in the other isomer you see this sulfate ions these are present inside and the bromide ions are outside the coordination sphere so this type of isomers now in which there is a exchange of ligands between coordination sphere and the ionization sphere is called your ionization isomers okay and the process is called ionization isomerism one thing you should keep in mind you see in this one the charge of sulfate ion is minus 2 sulfate is minus 2 and bromide is minus 1 okay so for exchanging one sulfate ion we need two bromide ions because charge should be balanced in ionization isomers the charge should always be conserved okay means uh, sulfate ion is charge is minus 2 and bromide ion its charge is minus 1 okay sulfate ion its charge is minus 2 and bromide ion its charge is minus 1 so uh, in order to exchange one sulfate ion we need two bromide ions so in this process what happens you see in this one in the first uh, say in the first this one okay in the first isomer you have a coordination number of six okay but in the second isomer you have a coordination number of five how we find coordination number you see if you have four amine li ammonia ligands and two bromide ligands so total six ligands that are directly attached to this metal so coordination number is six in this case you have 4 plus 1 5 so coordination number is 5 okay so in ionization isomers first point what we will keep in mind that there is a exchange of ligands between coordination sphere and the ionization sphere secondly the charge should be balanced means if we have we are exchanging an ion which has minus 2 charge so uh, it is being replaced with another ion which has charge minus 1 so we will need two of that uh, ions means uh, the ion which is minus one charge will need two ions to balance it with the ion which has minus two charge okay third thing is that in this process coordination number may change or may not change okay so these are the three points that you have to keep in mind for ionization isomers okay next uh, is your hydrate isomers okay hydrate isomers are same uh, there will be exchange of ligands between coordination sphere and the ionization sphere but here the ligand should be water okay means you can see water should be present as a ligand in the coordination sphere okay then only you can exchange this water molecules with other ions that are present outside the coordination sphere so in this case you see we have this complex we have six wa uh, water ligands attached to the chromium ion uh, say chromium metal and outside we have three chloride ions okay now in this process what we can do we can replace one means we can just exchange one chloride ion with a water ligand say in this one 
one chloride ion comes inside and one H two it goes outside. Okay. Next stage, what we can do? We can bring one more chloride inside and water outside. You see, there we have four and two chloride chloride ions and two water is outside. Okay. So, in this process, what we can say is that it is just similar to that of ionization isomers, but here the ligand that is exchanged is water okay now in ionization isomers what you have seen you have seen that the coordination number may change may not change but in this case the coordination number is six for all the ligands okay the coordination number is six for all the ligands secondly uh, this one say you cannot replace all the chloride ions okay so here you have three chloride ions now so maximum you can replace two chloride ions at least one chloride ion should be outside the coordination sphere okay means uh, since there are three chloride ions so we can maximum replace two chloride ions with water and one chloride ion will be fixed in the ionization sphere okay so this type of isomerism is called hydrate isomerism third one is your linkage isomerism so in linkage isomerism what happens we should have m bidentate ligands okay m bidentate ligands we have already studied in the previous uh, video it is just like this one say you have no2 okay say this is no2 and this no2 can also be written as o n o okay means this nitro group okay it can act as a ligand in two ways once the don donating atom can be nitrogen and another one the donating atom can be oxygen okay means same molecule or same ion it has two donating atoms so this type of ligands are called m bidentate ligands so when this uh, nitrogen acts as the donating atom it is called nitrito n and when oxygen acts as the donating atom it is called nitrito o so this yeah, if any ambidentic ligand is present in a coordination compound then what we can do we can change the donating atom okay and if we change the donating atom we will get two different compounds in this one we have nitrito n as the ligand in this one we have nitrito o as the ligand so this type of uh, isomers where there is a change in the donating atom means the linkage the linkage is different here it is nitrogen linkage here it is oxygen linkage so this type of isomers are called linkage isomers and the process is called linkage isomerism okay the last type of structural isomerism is coordination isomerism okay coordination isomerism uh, you see in this type of compounds now say you have this, uh, some type of coordinate compounds in which you will have two coordination spheres in this one no ionization sphere are present say in this type of coordination compounds now no ionization spheres are present okay only coordination spheres are present so in this compounds what happens there can be exchange of ligands between one coordination sphere with another say ammonia in this compound we have cobalt and hexa ammonia six ammonia ligands attached to cobalt and six cyanide ligands attached to chromium okay what we can do we can just replace the ammonia ligands with the cyanide ligands means the ammonia ligands will now go to chromium and this cyanide ligands will come to cobalt so we'll get these two products say these two isomers okay so this type of isomers where there is a exchange of ligands between coordination sphere means uh, between two coordination spheres then it is called coordination isomers okay so these are the four different types of structural isomerism that is present in coordination compounds next let us move to stereo isomerism okay now in stereo isomerism you see uh, we have two types of stereo isomers okay first one is the geometrical isomerism and second one is the optical isomerism okay geometrical and optical isomerism that is present okay so you see uh, first we will discuss geometrical isomerisms that is present in coordination number four coordination number four means four different ligands will be attached to the metal okay now first type a we have m a2 b2 type compounds say complexes 
so m a2 b2 means we have two different types of ligands and both are present two to each okay now if both means same ligands if same ligands they are on same side say like this this b are on same side and this a are on same side then it is called cis okay and if same ligands are 180 degree apart means they are opposite side then it is called trans cis trans i guess all of you know that if two ligands means same ligands are on same side then it is called cis if two same ligands are on opposite side it is called trans type b you see when you have three different types of ligands okay so in this one also same what you will see you will just see the two same ligands if are on same side it's cis and two same ligands if they are on opposite side it's trans okay take this two examples say in this one we have pt nh3 hold to cl2 okay so this compound this is called platine okay this compound its name is platine this one so this platine you see if this two ammonia they are or two cl they are on same sides no? so it is called cis okay and if two same ligands they are opposite side it is called trans okay these two compounds are very very important okay means they are very different in their properties this cis platine no? is an anti-cancer agent this question comes in your exam so you just keep this one in mind that cis platine it is an anti-cancer agent means this one is used for the treatment of cancer whereas the trans form is just useless okay it is not used anywhere so this is the importance of isomerism you see one isomer it is a drug molecule say so it is very very important and another one is just useless okay so these are the two different uh, isomers for platinum next you see this one uh, here we have a glycine nato ligand okay glycine nato ligand so in this one you see if it is arranged like this say this glycine nato is a bidentate ligand it has two ligating atoms one is nitrogen one is oxygen okay now if you, here we are using two glycine nato ligands now if this two nitrogen they are on same sides okay and you see this two oxygen also in same sides then it is cis okay and if you see these two nitrogen are of in opposite side then it is called trans okay so cis trans i guess it's uh, clear because you just uh, check for same type of ligands if uh, i mean same ligands if uh, they are on same side it is cis and same ligands if they are on opposite side it is trans okay the third type of uh, this one uh, compounds say of coordination number four what the third type c is we can have four different types of ligands four different types of ligands so if we have four different types of ligands what we will do how we will find that how many isomers are present in this one you cannot uh, write cis trans because for cis at least we need two same ligands so in this one what you will do you will just fix one ligand in all the structures we have fixed one ligand and the opposite ligand you see we are changing we are just changing the opposite ligands okay so in this way we can find how many isomers are present for this type of compound say having four different types of ligands so in this one we'll have three isomers we have kept a fixed and we will just change the opposite ligand once it is c once it is b once it is d okay so these are the three different types of uh, coordination compounds showing stereo isomerism showing geometrical isomerism and these are for only for coordination number four okay so next uh, let us discuss for coordination number six so for coordination number six we have cis trans say these are octahedral complexes okay so for octahedral complexes you see if two same ligands they are opposite side you see in this one these two same so these are same side these are same side you might consider that since these are same side it will be cis okay no what you have to do you have to check for trans first if any two same ligands are in opposite side then it will be trans okay if you have same ligands in same side plus same ligands in opposite side then also it will be trans only okay 
and in this one you see this two NHP are on same side, this two NHP are on same side, and this two CLR are also on same side. So for cis, what you have to do, you have to check for all the same ligands, they should be in the same side. Okay. So next uh, cis trans, I guess it's easy. So another type of uh, isomerism is present, geometrical isomerism is present in coordination number six. Let's say in compounds having coordination number six, it is called facial and medial isomers. Okay. In this one, same thing, we just uh, arrange uh, this one, the ligands surrounding a metal in the octahedral geometry, okay. And we have taken, in this one, we have taken a complex, say like this, M, A3, B3 type, okay. M, A3, B3 type of complex we have taken, okay. Now see, what we can do if, we join any three ligands, same ligands. Say here we have three A ligands and three B ligands, okay? If we join them and after joining, if we get the face of an octahedral, say if we join three ligands, no, we'll get a triangle, okay? And if the triangle, you see, it is just the face of an octahedron. Octahedron means it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight faces, now. So if we join any three ligands, means the same ligands, we'll get the face of an octahedron. Similarly, you see, if we join these three B ligands, we'll get that face, this face of the octahedron. Okay. So, in this uh, time, so if we get the face of an octahedron, then it is called a facial isomer. Okay. And in the other one, what do we have? If we join same ligands, okay, it cuts the octahedron along its diagonal. Okay. Means diagonal or meridian, you can say. If we join these three ligands, you see, it is cutting this octahedron along this diagonal, like this, okay. So this type of isomers where you see the octahedron is cut into, it's uh, cut along its diagonal is called your meridional isomer or mod isomer, okay. So this is very, very important because face form and mod form are asked in your exams. So you just check this one nicely, okay. So these are the different types of geometrical isomers or isomerism that are possible in coordination compounds. Okay. Next, uh, let us move on to the last type of structural isomer. It is called optical isomerism. Okay. So optical isomerism, you see, uh, optical isomerism means it is related to light. Okay. Optical activity means any compound or any substance. Okay that rotates the plane of polarized light it is called optically active okay so there are some conditions for optical activity first one is that this the compound should be non superimposable mirror images okay non superimposable mirror images means what you see this is the letter a okay and this is the mirror image of a now if we put this image of A on top of this one, we will get the same thing. Means this is A on top of this, we have written another A. Okay. So these two are same thing. This is one image and this is one. So if we put one on top of another, we will get the same thing. Okay. So this is called super impossible mirror image. Means one mirror image, if you place it on another on top of another it is exactly the same thing so this is called super impossible mirror image okay but in this case what you have see you have b okay this one is this one and on top of b if we put this image of b it is like this okay this one this image of now this you see the image and the original object there not super impossible means if we place one on top of another we are not getting the same thing okay so this uh, this property is called non super impossible okay now this should be present in a compound for optical activity the first thing is that it should have non super impossible mirror image means the mirror image of the object should not be super impossible on the object okay Second condition is that it should be asymmetric in nature. Asymmetric means it should not possess any plane of symmetry. 
plane of symmetry means you see you have this compound a m a2 b2 type so we can cut this one into two equal parts okay like this or you can cut it like this also just uh, it's, a, it's a mistake okay in the structure it will be like this you will draw a plane in this way then only you see this is an image of this one and this b is an image of this b okay so this uh, if you cut this along this horizontal plane then you will get two equal halves okay so this is called a plane of symmetry similarly this one uh, if we cut along this plane uh, a m a if this three uh, atoms falls in this plane then you will get this and this as the mirror image okay so this type of compounds now in which you have plane of symmetry these compounds do not show optical activity okay and does not show optical activation. clear and the last condition is that the uh, means optical activity is shown only in octahedral complexes okay it is not shown by square planar or tetrahedral complexes it is only shown in octahedral complexes okay so example you take say this one it is m a2 b2 c2 type compounds so in this one what we will have you see this to the same side okay and for this one the mirror image is this one this one okay now this mirror image you see this one this image if you put on top of this one it is non superimposable okay means this one if you place on top of this one it is non superimposable okay so that's why uh, these two are showing optical activity okay and these two are optical isomerism isomers so optical isomers they are represented by either d or l okay so d is for clockwise rotation of light and l is for anti clockwise rotation of light okay so in every uh, say mixture of optical isomers will get 50% d and 50% l okay so if d is present l is always be present if l is present then d will be present okay and 50 50 percent mixture of d and l are present and the mixture is called your racemic mixture okay it's called a racemic mixture second important thing is that you should remember that optical isomerism is shown only by cis isomers okay the trans compounds their mirror images are super impossible on each other so trans compounds does not show optical isomerism clear so you can see this one is another example for optical isomerism these are chelating ligands it is ethylene diamine okay en so you see this the mirror image is like this okay and these are non superimposable this is d this is l clear so these are the different types of isomerism that may be present in coordination compounds i hope it is clear so in the next video we will be discussing about the bonding in coordination compounds okay so we will be discussing crystal field theory ligand field theory and uh, valence bond theory okay so thank you